Jose P. Laurel, born Jose Pisciana Laurel Y. Garcia, March 9, 1891 to November 6, 1959, was a Filipino politician and judge. He was the president of the Second Philippine Republic, a Japanese puppet state when occupied during World War II, from 1943 to 1945. Since the administration of President Diosdado Macapagal (1961–1965), Laurel has been officially recognized by later administrations as former president of the Philippines. Topic: <laughs> Early life and career. Topic. Jose Pisciana Laurel Y. Garcia was born on March 9, 1891 in the town of Tanawan, Batangas. His parents were Sotero Laurel I and Jacoba Garcia. His father had been an official in the revolutionary government of Emilio Aguinaldo and a signatory to the 1898 Malolos Constitution. While a teen, Laurel was indicted for attempted murder when he almost killed a rival suitor of the girl he stole a kiss from with a fan knife. While studying and finishing law school, he argued for and received an acquittal. Laurel received his law degree from the University of the Philippines College of Law in 1915, where he studied under Dean George A. Malcolm, whom he would later succeed on the Supreme Court. He then obtained a Master of Laws degree from University of Santo Tomas in 1919. Laurel then attended Yale Law School, where he obtained his JSD degree. Laurel began his life in public service while a student, as a messenger in the Bureau of Forestry then as a clerk in the Code Committee tasked with the codification of Philippine laws. During his work for the Code Committee, he was introduced to its head, Thomas A. Street, a future Supreme Court justice who would be a mentor to the young Laurel. Upon his return from Yale, Laurel was appointed first as Under Secretary of the Interior Department, then promoted as Secretary of the Interior in 1922. In that post, he would frequently clash with the American Governor General Leonard Wood, and eventually, in 1923, resign from his position together with other cabinet members in protest of Wood's administration. His clashes with Wood solidified Laurel's nationalist credentials. Laurel was an honorary member of the Philippine fraternity Upsilon Sigma Phi. Topic: <laughs> Senator and Congressman of the Philippines. In 1925 Laurel was elected to the Philippine Senate. He would serve for one term before losing his re-election bid in 1931 to Claro M. Recto. He retired to private practice, but by 1934, he was again elected to public office, this time as a delegate to the 1935 Constitutional Convention. Hailed as one of the seven wise men of the convention, he would sponsor the provisions on the Bill of Rights. Following the ratification of the 1935 Constitution and the establishment of the Commonwealth of the Philippines, Laurel was appointed Associate Justice of the Supreme Court on February 29, 1936. Topic: <laughs> Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. Topic: Laurel's Supreme Court tenure may have been overshadowed by his presidency, yet he remains one of the most important Supreme Court justices in Philippine history. He authored several leading cases still analyzed to this day that defined the parameters of the branches of government as well as their powers. Angara v. Electoral Commission, 63 Phil. 139 1936, which is considered as the Philippine equivalent of Marbury v. Madison, 5 U.S. 1 Cranch, 137 1803, is Laurel's most important contribution to jurisprudence and even the rule of law in the Philippines. In affirming that the court had jurisdiction to review the rulings of the Electoral Commission organized under the National Assembly, the court, through Justice Laurel's opinion, firmly entrenched the power of Philippine courts to engage in judicial review of the acts of the other branches of government, and to interpret the Constitution. Held the court, through Laurel, the Constitution is a definition of the powers of government. Who is to determine the nature, scope and extent of such powers? The Constitution itself has provided for the instrumentality of the judiciary as the rational way. 
and when the judiciary mediates to allocate constitutional boundaries, it does not assert any superiority over the other departments, it does not in reality nullify or invalidate an act of the legislature, but only asserts the solemn and sacred obligation assigned to it by the Constitution to determine conflicting claims of authority under the Constitution and to establish for the parties in an actual controversy the rights which that instrument secures and guarantees to them. Another highly influential decision penned by Laurel was Ang Tabay v. Circle, 69 Phil. 635 1940. The court acknowledged in that case that the substantive and procedural requirements before proceedings in administrative agencies, such as labor relations courts, were more flexible than those in judicial proceedings. At the same time, the court still asserted that the right to due process of law must be observed, and enumerated the cardinal primary rights that must be respected in administrative proceedings. Since then, these cardinal primary rights have stood as the standard in testing due process claims in administrative cases. Callalang v. Williams, 70 Phil. 726 was a seemingly innocuous case involving a challenge raised by a private citizen to a traffic regulation banning caliches from Manila streets during certain afternoon hours. The court, through Laurel, upheld the regulation as within the police power of the government. But in rejecting the claim that the regulation was violative of social justice, Laurel would respond with what would become his most famous aphorism, which is to this day widely quoted by judges and memorized by Filipino law students. Social justice is neither communism, nor despotism, nor atomism, nor anarchy, but the humanization of laws and the equalization of social and economic forces by the state so that justice in its rational and objectively secular conception may at least be approximated. Social justice means the promotion of the welfare of all the people, the adoption by the government of measures calculated to ensure economic stability of all the competent elements of society, through the maintenance of a proper economic and social equilibrium in the interrelations of the members of the community, constitutionally, through the adoption of measures legally justifiable, or extra-constitutionally, through the exercise of powers underlying the existence of all governments on the time-honored principle of salus populi est suprema lex. Social justice, therefore, must be founded on the recognition of the necessity of interdependence among divers and diverse units of a society and of the protection that should be equally and evenly extended to all groups as a combined force in our social and economic life, consistent with the fundamental and paramount objective of the state of promoting the health, comfort, and quiet of all persons, and of bringing about the greatest good to the greatest number. Topic. Presidency. Topic. The presidency of Laurel understandably remains one of the most controversial in Philippine history. After the war, he would be denounced by the pro-American sectors as a war collaborator or even a traitor, although his indictment for treason was superseded by President Rox's amnesty proclamation. However, despite being one of the most infamous figures in Philippine history, he is also regarded as a panaceanist who supported independence. When asked if he was pro-American or pro-Japanese, his answer would be pro-Filipino. Topic. Accession Topic. When Japan invaded, President Manuel L. Quezon first fled to Bataan and then to the United States to establish a government in exile. Quezon ordered Laurel, Vargas and other cabinet members to stay. Laurel's pre-war, close relationship with Japanese officials a son had been sent to study at the Imperial Japanese Army Academy in Tokyo, and Laurel had received an honorary doctorate from Tokyo University, placed him in a good position to interact with the Japanese occupation forces. Laurel was among the Commonwealth officials instructed by the Japanese Imperial Army to form a provisional government when they invaded and occupied the country. He cooperated with the Japanese, in contrast to Chief Justice Abad Santos, who was shot for refusing to cooperate. Because he was well known to the Japanese as a critic of U.S. rule, as well as having demonstrated a willingness to serve under the Japanese military administration, he held a series of high posts in 1942-1943. Under vigorous Japanese influence, the National Assembly selected Laurel to serve as president in 1943. Topic. Domestic policies Topic. Topic. Economy Topic. During Laurel 
S tenure as president, hunger was the main worry. Prices of essential commodities rose to unprecedented heights. The government exerted every effort to increase production and bring consumers' goods under control. However, Japanese rapacity had the better of it all. On the other hand, guerrilla activities and Japanese retaliatory measures brought the peace and order situation to a difficult point. Resorting to district zoning and domiciliary searches, coupled with arbitrary arrests, the Japanese made the mission of Laurel's administration incalculably exasperating and perilous. Topic. Food shortage Topic. During his presidency, the Philippines faced a crippling food shortage which demanded much of Laurel's attention. Rice and bread were still available but the sugar supply was gone. Laurel also resisted in Japanese demands that the Philippines issue a formal declaration of war against the United States. He later was forced to declare war on the USA and Great Britain as long as Filipinos would not have to fight. Topic. Foreign policies Topic. Topic. Philippine-Japanese Treaty of Alliance Topic. On October 20, 1943 the Philippine-Japanese Treaty of Alliance was signed by Claro M. Recto, who was appointed by Laurel as his foreign minister, and Japanese ambassador to Philippines Sozio Murata. One redeeming feature was that no conscription was envisioned. Topic. Greater East Asia Conference Topic. Shortly after the inauguration of the Second Philippine Republic, President Laurel, together with cabinet ministers Recto and Paredes flew to Tokyo to attend the Greater East Asia Conference which was an international summit held in Tokyo, Japan from November 5–6, 1943, in which Japan hosted the heads of state of various component members of the Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. The conference was also referred to as the Tokyo Conference. The conference addressed few issues of any substance, eradication of Western opium drug trade and to illustrate the empire of Japan's commitments to the Pan-Asianism ideal and to emphasize its role as the liberator of Asia from Western colonialism. <laughs> Martial law Laurel declared the country under martial law in 1944 through Proclamation No. 29, dated September 21. Martial law came into effect on September 22, 1944 at 9 a.m. Proclamation No. 30 was issued the next day, declaring the existence of a state of war between the Philippines and the United States and the United Kingdom. This took effect on September 23, 1944 at 10 a.m. Resistance Topic. Due to the nature of Laurel's government and its connection to Japan, much of the population actively resisted his presidency, supporting the exiled Commonwealth government, as can be expected. However, this DOESN-T mean that his government did not have forces against the anti-Japanese resistance and the ongoing Philippine Commonwealth military. Topic. Assassination attempt Topic. On June 5, 1943, Laurel was playing golf at the Wack Wack Golf and Country Club in Mandaluyong when he was shot around four times with a .45 caliber pistol. The bullets barely missed his heart and liver. He was rushed by his golfing companions, among them FU President Nicanor Reyes Sr., to the Philippine General Hospital where he was operated by the chief military surgeon of the Japanese Military Administration and Filipino surgeons. Laurel enjoyed a speedy recovery. Two suspects to the shooting were reportedly captured and swiftly executed by the Kempatai. Another suspect, a former boxer named Feliciano Lazardo, was presented for identification by the Japanese to Laurel at the latter's hospital bed, but Laurel then professed unclear memory. However, in his 1953 memoirs, Laurel would admit that Lazardo, by then one of his bodyguards who had pledged to give his life for him, was indeed the would-be assassin. Still, the historian Teodoro Agoncillo in his book on the Japanese occupation, identified a captain with a guerrilla unit as the shooter. Topic. Dissolution of the regime 
Topic. On July 26, 1945, the Potsdam Declaration served upon Japan an ultimatum to surrender or face utter annihilation. The Japanese government refused the offer. On August 6, 1945, Hiroshima, with some 300,000 inhabitants, was almost totally destroyed by an atomic bomb dropped from an American plane. Two days later, the Soviet Union declared war against Japan. The next day, August 9, 1945, a second atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. The Allied forces' message now had a telling effect. Japan unconditionally surrendered to the Allied powers on August 15, 1945. Since April 1945, President Laurel, together with his family and cabinet member Camilo Osias, Speaker Benigno Aquino Sr., Gen. Tomas Kapinpin, and Ambassador Jorge B. Vargas, had been in Japan. Evacuated from Baguio shortly after the city fell, they traveled to Apari and thence, on board Japanese planes, had been taken to Japan. Laurel was put in Sugamo prison then was later transferred to Nara for house arrest. On August 17, 1945, from Nara Hotel in Nara, Japan, President Laurel issued an executive proclamation which declared the dissolution of his regime. President Laurel is the only Philippine president who served the three branches of government. He became a senator congressman, associate justice and a president of the Second Republic. Post-presidency Topic. 1949 presidential election on September 2, 1945, the Japanese forces formally surrendered to the United States. General Douglas MacArthur ordered Laurel arrested for collaborating with the Japanese. In 1946 he was charged with 132 counts of treason, but he was never brought to trial due to the general amnesty granted by President Manuel Roxas in 1948. Laurel ran for president against Elpidio Quirino in 1949 but lost in what future Secretary of Foreign Affairs Carlos P. Romulo and Marvin M. Gray considered as the dirtiest election in Philippine electoral history. Return to the Senate Laurel garnered the biggest votes and was elected to the Senate in 1951, under the Nationalista Party. He was urged to run for president in 1953, but declined, working instead for the successful election of Ramon Magsaysay. Magsaysay appointed Laurel head of a mission tasked with negotiating trade and other issues with United States officials, the result being known as the Laurel-Langley Agreement. Retirement and death Laurel considered his election to the Senate as a vindication of his reputation. He declined to run for re-election in 1957. He retired from public life, concentrating on the development of the Lyceum of the Philippines established by his family. During his retirement, Laurel stayed in a 1957 three-story, seven-bedroom mansion in Mandaluyong City, dubbed Villa Pachencha, after Laurel's wife. The home was one of three residences constructed by the Laurel family, the other two being in Tanawan, Batangas and in Paco, Manila, called Villa Peñafrancha. In 2008, the Laurel family sold Villa Pachencha to ex-Senate President Manny Villar and his wife Cynthia. On November 6, 1959, Laurel died at the Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital, in Manila, from a massive heart attack and a stroke. He is buried in Tanawan, Batangas. Topic. Honors Topic. National Honor Philippine Legion of Honor, Chief Commander 1959. Topic. Personal life Topic. He married Pachencha Hidalgo on April 9, 1911. The couple had nine children. 
Jose Laurel Jr. August 27, 1912 to March 11, 1998, member of the Philippine National Assembly from Batangas from 1943 to 1944, congressman from Batangas 3rd District from 1941 to 1957 and from 1961 to 1972, speaker of the House of Representatives of the Philippines from 1954 to 1957 and from 1967 to 1971, assemblyman of regular Batasang Pambansa from 19 1984 to 1986, member of the Philippine Constitutional Commission of 1986 from June 2 to October 15, 1986 and a running mate of Carlos P. Garcia of the Nacionalista Party in Philippine presidential election of 1957, placed second in the vice presidential race against Diosdado Macapagal of Liberal Party Philippines. Jose Laurel III, August 27, 1914 to January 6, 2003, Ambassador to Japan. Natividad Laurel, born December 25, 1916. Sotero Laurel II, September 27, 1918 to September 16, 2009, Senator of the Philippines from 1987 to 1992, became Senate President pro tempore from 1990 to 1992. Mariano Antonio Laurel, January 17, 1922 to August 2, 1979. Rosenda Pachencha Laurel, born January 9, 1925. Potenciana Nita Laurel Yupanco, born May 19, 1926. Salvador Laurel, November 18, 1928 to January 27, 2004, Senator of the Philippines from 1967 to 1972, Prime Minister of the Philippines from February 25 to March 25, 1986, Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines from March 25, 1986 to February 2, 1987, Vice President of the Philippines from February 25, 1986 to June 30, 1992, and a Presidential Candidate. Date of the Nationalista Party in Philippine presidential election of 1992 placed seventh in the presidential race against Fidel V. Ramos. Arsenio Laurel, December 14, 1931 to November 19, 1967. He was the first two-time winner of the Macau Grand Prix, winning it consecutively in 1962 and 1963. Topic: Descendants. Topic. Roberto Laurel, grandson, President of Lyceum of the Philippines University Manila and Lyceum of the Philippines University Cavite, son of Sotero Laurel third son of Jose P. Laurel Peter Laurel, grandson, President of Lyceum of the Philippines University Batangas and Lyceum of the Philippines University Laguna Jose Bayani J. B. Laurel Jr., Unido Party List, grandson Camille Isabella the First Laurel, Unido Party List, Great Granddaughter. Anne Maria Margaret I Laurel, Great Granddaughter. Jose Antonio Miguel the First Laurel, Great Grandson. Franco Laurel, Great Grandson, Singer and Actor. Rajo Laurel, Great Grandson, Fashion Designer. Cocoy Laurel, Grandson, Actor. IWI Laurel Asensio, Granddaughter, Singer and Entrepreneur. Patty Laurel, granddaughter, TV host and former MTV VJ Jose Laurel IV, grandson, representative of the 3rd District of Batangas, son of Jose B. Laurel Jr. Denise Laurel, great-granddaughter, actress and singer Nicole Laurel Asensio, great-granddaughter, lead singer of General Luna Band See also Topic Laurel Incident Topic Notes Topic Jose P. Laurel also elected as congressman prior to presidency. Please include in his political experience. Topic References Topic Laurel, Jose P. 1953. Bread and Freedom. Zaid, Gregorio F. 1984. Philippine History and Government. National Bookstore Printing Press. Sevilla, Victor J. 1985. Justices of the Supreme Court of the Philippines Vol. I. Quezon City, Philippines, New Day Publishers.
pp. 79-80, 174-176. ISBN 971-10-0134-9. Malcolm, George A. American Colonial Careerist. United States of America, Christopher Publishing House. pp. 103 104, 96 97, 139, 249 251. Alouette, Alfonso. By Sword and Fire The Destruction of Manila in World War II, February 3 March 3, 1945. Philippines National Commission for Culture and the Arts. pp. 134 138. ISBN 971-8521-10-0. Ocampo, Ambeth The Irony of Tragedy. Bonifacio's Bolo 4th ed. Pasig City, Anvil Publishing. pp. 60-61. ISBN 971-27-0418-1. President of the Philippines Jose Pisiana Laurel's Address, Greater East Asia Conference, November 5-6, 1943 External links Topic. Works by or about Jose P. Laurel at Internet Archive The Jose P. Laurel Memorial Foundation The Philippine Presidency Project Jose Laurel Dies, Filipino Leader, Head of Wartime Japanese Puppet Regime, Lost Race for President in 1949. New York Times. November 6, 1959. Retrieved January 8, 2008.